I missed every single homecoming in prom. Freshman year, volleyball was my everything. I and mean, I was like, I must win. I was just pouring out so much and you can only pour out so much until you just actually reach your end. One, winning the national championship, but two, doing it with my sister. I don't know of a lot of people that have won national championships with their sister. I was like, I don't need therapy. Like I'm fine, I can work through this by myself. Recognizing that my performance, my stats, they're just numbers. I'm so much more than just Maddie Skinner, the volleyball player. My worth is not defined in that. Welcome to the Morning's Club podcast. I'm your host, Bryce Wilson. And today I'm here with D1 volleyball player, Madison Skinner. Madison, thanks for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. So we're going to get into your mindset and also what it's like being a D1 athlete. But before we do that, I'd like to hear about your journey to become a D1 athlete. So where are you from and who are you as an athlete growing up? I'm from Houston, Texas. Well, Katie, right outside of Houston. Um, and I actually didn't start playing volleyball until I was about 15. I was a dancer for the longest time, believe it or not. I don't advertise that too much just because people are like, show me a move. I'm like, that's not my thing anymore. But so I started out dancing, um, played soccer for eight years. And then my sister played volleyball from when she was probably, she did YMCA volleyball. So she was young. Um, and then she started going through the rec recruiting process and I was like, this is something that I'm interested in. And I wanted to play a sport in college. So I was like, let me just try volleyball. Mm -hmm. So I switched over to that and then it kind of just went from there. Mm -hmm. But it really just kind of stemmed from my sister and me being inspired okay. by her. In high school, you were, you were ranked number two in the nation. So how did, you, how did you get to that point? Do you think it was all time? Like, what do you think led to that? Oh, gosh. Just, I mean, I came from an amazing club, Houston mm -hmm. Skyline. Mm -hmm. Shout out. Yes, <laughs> the staff there is just incredible. They taught me so much. Um, and then also Jenna Mitch helped me with my recruiting process. Mm -hmm. um, so I think just them and their training was really what kind of shaped me. But um, also just the hard work and, mm -hmm. and the motivation and just people feeding into me and supporting me. Do you think, can you name a certain sacrifice you had in high school where maybe people were going out to parties or maybe there's homecoming you missed or something like that because you were training? Yeah, I missed every single homecoming in prom except for one. And I was willing to do that. But I mean, there were some girls that skipped nationals or a big qualifier for mm. their prom or their homecoming, mm. which I totally respect. Yeah. But I was one of those people that was like, no, I want to play. I want to <laughs> yeah. be there. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to be able to win. So mm -hmm. that was just, I mean, one of many sacrifices okay. that we had to do yeah. kind of growing up. It paid off because you went D1. Tell us about the recruiting process early on. Like, when did you commit to Kentucky? And but how was that recruiting process? Uh, wild, to mm -hmm. say the least. Um, I was recruited before they kind of changed the roles, so I was super young and mm -hmm. um, wanted to be a kid and wanted to enjoy my time and club right. and my friends. Um, so I wasn't super invested at first, but obviously as I got older, I was like, I really need to start focusing on this because this is my future. So mm -hmm. started taking phone calls, emailing back coaches, going on visits, doing all that stuff. And then I committed to Kentucky, I think it was my sophomore year mm -hmm. um, of high school. At that point, I didn't really know what I wanted. I knew they were good at volleyball. I liked the people there. Um, and I was like, this is where I wanted to be. I didn't know what I wanted to major in or mm -hmm. anything like that. Um, but as I kind of got older, the things that I was looking for in a college kind of changed. Um, and that's how I ended up, kind of ended up at Texas. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll get into that in a second. Yeah. But uh, yeah. coming to Kentucky, do you think you kind of committed too early or what are some uh, things that you could have done better looking back. I totally think I committed too early. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of pressure just from coaches um, and people in general. I mean, all your friends are committing. It's just mm -hmm. kind of expected for you to commit at an early age. Right. Um, so I think that pressure played a big part in it. But yeah, I do wish I would have waited a little bit longer mm -hmm. and gone on more visits mm -hmm. and um, kind of taken my time throughout the process. And um, maybe I would have went to one school and <laughs> <So> <laughs> that one school, right. but you yeah. never know. Yeah, Things exactly. change. And, and everything happens for a reason. Like you went to Kentucky, We'll talk about what happened at the end of the year, but the first like freshman year, how was that transition? It was tough. I mean, I graduated COVID year, mm -hmm. so it was just weird. We didn't really hang out with anyone. We kind of stayed within our volleyball bubble. That's what mm -hmm. we called it um, and competed. But there was just a lot of unknowns. So yeah. other than that, I mean, it was fun just to be around the girls and have a lot of time just right. to get to know them. But it was different. The transition in the beginning was tough, but it led up to the national championship. So <laughs> how was that? What do you think led to y'all winning that national championship that year? Oh, my goodness. So much hard work, blood, sweat, tears. Mm -hmm. I think the hardest thing was just not knowing if we were going to be able to play. Mm -hmm. I mean, we showed up to practice every single day and we're working super hard, but we weren't guaranteed any competition. So it was just mental. Mm -hmm. That was the hardest part of it, just not knowing what kind of to expect. But I mean, obviously, it paid off in the end mm -hmm. and it was 
probably the most rewarding season just because there were so many things that we had to work through and being quarantined and mm-hmm. you were sometimes missing two or three practice or two to three weeks of practice oh, yeah. um, and then happy to come back and earn your spot back. Mm-hmm. So there's just so many different factors that played into it, but mm-hmm. obviously it's an amazing feeling. What was the toughest part of that freshman year? I mean, of course, yeah, the COVID is different, difficult part, but let's say outside of that, what are the toughest parts? There's a big learning curve. Mm-hmm. I mean, just the jump from high school to college, um, with just your volleyball ability is crazy. I mean, you come in as a freshman, you're super pumped and excited, and then you get humbled a little bit. And um, there's just a lot to learn, and there's a lot of people that are super successful and super talented that you have to kind of compete with. Mm-hmm. Um, but it challenges you, obviously, and it prepares you for the next level. And then after that, you guys won the national championship game. Did you stay there another year, and, and was that COVID again? Or? Yeah, so I stayed there. Um, I was a mid-year transfer, so I was there for one more season, uh, my sophomore season, and then I transferred in December mm-hmm. of that year and then came to Texas. Yeah, we're we'll talking about the, the transition. So in the national championship game, y'all beat Texas in the final, right? So you kind of did the opposite of Kevin Durant where you, <laughs> you went to losing team. So why did you go to – why did you chose to go to UT? Crazy enough, I wasn't planning on going to Texas. Yeah. I actually told Jarrett no or <laughs> – was just like, I don't foresee myself coming back to Texas. I really Mm -hmm. wanted to go to California. Mm -hmm. I'd really struggled at Kentucky. And I was like, I'm not enjoying volleyball right now. I need to go to a place where I know I'm going to have fun and be Mm -hmm. able to meet new people and kind of get my love for the sport back. Mm -hmm. And so didn't foresee myself coming back to Texas, but I ended up coming on a visit just Mm -hmm. very last minute. And the resources here and the people were just, it blew my mind. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is where I want to be. This is where I feel close to home. I'm only two hours from my family. (laughs) Um, And it all just kind of played out that way. Why did you feel you wanted to leave in the first place? Was there a difficulty? How much can you open up about that? It just, long story short, it wasn't the place for me. I didn't feel like I had the support that I needed. Mm -hmm. Um, It was hard being away from home. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of mental health challenges, too, Mm -hmm. that played into it. But I just needed to go to a place where I felt extremely valued as a person Mm -hmm. and a player Mm -hmm. um, and had the support that I felt like I needed in order to do what I Mm -hmm. needed to do as a student athlete. Right. And so when you went to UT, you won the national championship again. But before that, what were the first, what were the difficulties initially when you first got there? Oh, goodness. (laughs) Um... I mean, you're in a new environment. Mm -hmm. You feel like a freshman again. I mean, you don't know the campus. You don't know the people. Your schedule's kind of all over the place. But the girls from day one were super supportive. um, And anything I needed, they were there for me. And if I was confused on where to go or Mm -hmm. what I was doing or just had a rough day, like, they were the first people that I was able to go to. And Mm -hmm. they were kind of my support in that time. So um, just, I mean, being in a new place is hard. But you, again, you won the national championship for the second time. uh, So you've done Twice at two schools. I don't know if there's many people who have done that. So what's like the secret sauce? How'd y'all win a national championship twice? Oh, gosh. Uh, I mean, just, again, the work ethic and the people. Mm -hmm. I mean, we genuinely loved each other so Mm -hmm. much. And it's so cliche to say, but it feels like a family. And I've never felt that before Mm -hmm. in regards to just being a part of a program. And so just the hard work and us investing Mm -hmm. in our friendships and um, each other as people translated on the court. Mm -hmm. And we genuinely enjoyed playing together and being alongside one another and supported each other Mm -hmm. no matter what. What was the experience of the actual game? Was the the final the most pressure you felt or how was that experience? I felt weirdly comfortable on that court, which granted I've been been there before. before. Um, But I don't know. I felt super calm, Mm -hmm. super relaxed. I mean, we were challenged and we were pushed in a lot of different aspects, but I mean, we obviously came out on top Mm -hmm. and, I was expecting that. Right. I mean, we put the work in, mm-hmm. we trusted one another, we'd been manifesting it and yeah. praying about okay. it and yeah. all this <laughs> stuff for so long. And so we just had complete confidence that mm-hmm. it was ours. And so we went and took it. Yeah. Can you talk about what y'all did beforehand? You said manifesting and I'm sure y'all are close. Like uh, what are the things that y'all, you think you did really well to get to that, uh, to win that? Our language was mm-hmm. a huge part of it. Um, and just as being like when we get to the national Mm -hmm. championship, when we accomplish all these great things. And I think we did also a good job of, yes, we're speaking into the future, but also just taking it one day at a time, taking it one match at a time and not trying to get too far ahead of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, But in the end, we always know that's the goal. And I mean, obviously coming in the gym and working hard every single day and we had so much depth on our team, um, which one is amazing because you're challenged in practice. Um, but two, you always have someone coming for your spot. I thought you were going to say you can relax and take it easy and take command. But no, no, you don't want that. <laughs> oh, you don't that's want the that. complete no. opposite. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, so you won the national championship game. What's like the aftermath of that? Um, is it, was it really quick? It went by quick? And then you're in off season now. What's the aftermath of the national championship game? 
Oh, goodness. I mean, we celebrated with our family, mm-hmm. and um, it kind of cuts into your Christmas break a little bit, which is mm-hmm. totally fine. It was <laughs> worth it. But mm-hmm. just kind of went home and relaxed, and I traveled a little bit and mm-hmm. um, came back, and now we're we're here again and ready to work. So what's your ambitions for next year? You're trying to get four in a row, three, four in a row? <laughs> what's your goal? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would be the goal. It would be mm-hmm. awesome. I have a lot of belief in our current team. Mm-hmm. The girls are super sweet, super talented. Mm-hmm. And right now, obviously, it's different because mm-hmm. we're training beach, and we're not really – and indoor as much as we normally are, mm-hmm. but I'm super excited for the season. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like we're capable of accomplishing a lot of great things. After that, what's your ambitions for like the pro scene? Like what's, uh, what's the pro scene in volleyball? Are you, are you thinking about that after afterwards? And yeah, what's your, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I would love to go pro. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my plan right now. Mm-hmm. Obviously I got to finish school and yeah. do all those things, mm-hmm. but, um, I do want to continue to play overseas mm-hmm. and that's something I'm super passionate about. How is the scene? Like, is it, do you think there should be a U.S. league? And I heard, I think is Kevin Durant supposed to build one? Have you heard about I that? heard something mm-hmm. about that. I don't really, I haven't kept up with it too okay. much. Um, they are, I mean, they have athletes unlimited here. Mm-hmm. Um, they're starting a new league, um, as well in the next couple of years. So I think there's a lot of opportunity mm-hmm. coming up. It's obviously not as big as it is overseas. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's why a lot of the girls are still going over there. But mm-hmm. it's definitely exciting to know that there's an opportunity to stay close to home and um, kind of do what you love. Right. And you also, you practice with the national team. So how many, how much, how long have you worked with them? And what was that experience like? I wasn't in the pipeline super early um, for USA. I didn't really do a lot of like the HP or the um kind of like traveling teams growing up but yeah I've done the collegiate national team I'll go out there and train with them every once in a while and it's awesome I mean mm-hmm. you're surrounded by the best of the best yeah. and um to be able to be coached by cry and, mm-hmm. and do all these things is just awesome mm-hmm. I mean it's it challenges me and it, it's it encourages me just right. for the future and mm-hmm. gets me excited about it yeah, so is the Olympics on the horizon too oh gosh that's, that's um not- yeah I mean hopefully <laughs> at hopefully. some point I right. don't know mm-hmm. um how long I'll be playing or that's kind right, of yeah. I mean, my plan, but isn't it? It's twenty twenty four. Yeah, which I yeah, yeah I don't uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> foresee that. Hey, you gotta manifest it again, right? You I mean, I could. could. <laughs> it's just a lot of the yeah. older girls. Okay, okay. my sister might have an yeah. opportunity, okay. which is awesome. That's cool. Yeah, but All right, that makes sense. All right, so that was a bit about your story. So now we can get into your mindset. Uh, off the bat, is there anything you do to take care of your mental health? Like, how do you deal with the highs and lows of your sport? Oh gosh, something that I think was just life-changing for me was finally taking time to myself. Mm -hmm. I was just pouring out so much Mm -hmm. and you can only pour out so much until you just actually reach your end. Mm -hmm. So, um, self-care is huge for me. I'm very much an introvert. I like to take time to myself and be alone and kind of recharge in that way. But I think just setting aside time for myself to do things that I enjoy doing outside of volleyball, um, has really helped my mental health. And also just, I mean, I have a therapist and I have someone that I talk to. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I love that that's normalized now mm-hmm. and athletes are starting to speak out about mental health and mm-hmm. all those things that they're struggling with, but, um, just really making sure I have the support that I need. And, and that's been game changing for me. Can you talk about therapy? Like when did you start doing that? Um, and how's that experience been? So I started doing therapy when I was at Kentucky. Um, I'd kind of pushed it off for the longest time just because there's such a stigma around it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't need therapy. Like I'm yeah. fine. Yeah. I can work through this yeah. by myself, but Um, the lady that was helping me at Kentucky, which I'm not with her anymore, just as she was through the school, but she taught me so much and it was very much just like a conversation. I didn't feel like I was in therapy. I feel like that's such a weird word, but I was just simply talking to someone. Mm -hmm. Um, and we connected on a really deep level and we had a lot of things in common and I've kind of continued that throughout here. And I've kind of taken a break recently just because Mm -hmm. I've been on a really good spot. Mm -hmm. Um, and I haven't really had too much to talk about. (laughs) Um, but it's been awesome just to have Mm -hmm. someone outside of my situation Mm -hmm. and someone that. I mean, it's not even an athlete and just mm-hmm. can speak into me and encourage me mm-hmm. and kind of give me advice on um, how to better myself. Do you think that if an athlete doesn't have those resources or access to a therapist, that they can still uh, talk to the family and friends? Like, is that still important for them to do? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, and I think for me, it was just I wanted to get someone that didn't know me super mm-hmm. well um, that could give me an outside perspective mm-hmm. kind of looking in because obviously my mom knows me super mm-hmm. well and I obviously right. talk to her about everything. But um, it also pushed me outside of my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. I don't really like talking to people that I don't know. Yeah. I'm just kind of keep within my circle. So, mm-hmm. um, it challenged me in a lot of different mm-hmm. aspects, but it's been great. Okay, great. And you talked about being an introvert and needing time to uh, reset and everything. So what are some things you do to reset? Like, how do you find, well, first, how do you find time in your busy schedule? But then how do you, uh, reset and what things do you like to do? Oh, goodness. Um, I've kind of discovered, I, it's nice to know that you have like a day off to do X, Y, Z, but For me, it's kind of just finding 30 minutes to an hour within the day just to be able to 
go outside, go on a walk, maybe go to the pool. Mm -hmm. I love like skincare. Mm -hmm. I do face masks a lot, mm -hmm. self-care, go get my nails done. So mm -hmm. that's what it kind of looks like for me, mm -hmm. just, I guess, pampering myself in, <laughs> some, in yeah. a sense, yeah. but just kind of getting alone by myself mm -hmm. and and really just being outside is a yeah. big thing for me. Yeah. Taking care of your physical health is, is yeah. just in case, as your mental health. Um, you got to talk about pressure because you've been in the biggest games in, in your sport. So what was the most pressure you felt in the game and then how did you do with it? Most pressure, I mean, national championship my freshman year. I was actually playing right side, which I wasn't a right side coming out of high school. Um, I had really never played right side, but I wasn't starting um, the beginning of my freshman year and wasn't getting really any playing time. And I was like, I want to play. So I'm like, I'm just going to switch the right side and see what I can do if I can beat someone out. And I did. And also just being in front of a huge crowd um, and just the pressure that you feel from competing for a national championship. And I wanted to obviously win for my sister and win for um, the seniors and all the people that had come before us. But that's obviously a very nerve wracking yeah. moment. So the first time you felt a lot of pressure and the second time you said you're completely calm. So what was the difference in that? How'd you, how'd you carry yourself in the second one? I just feel like I had confidence in my teammates and um, our staff and known that we had done everything we possibly could to prepare ourselves for that mm -hmm. moment. Um, and obviously I'm older and I've learned so much more and mm -hmm. win or loss, I knew my, my identity and my self-worth wasn't defined by that. So that mm -hmm. helped me play a little bit looser mm -hmm. as freshman year volleyball was my everything. Right, right. Um, and I was like, I must win. <laughs> it's, there's, there's no other option. So I think just me maturing and my mindset kind of changing over the years helped that. How do you deal with the failure in like tough moments? Because you said, um, in the freshman year, your coach wasn't playing you as much. How'd you get through that period? We just train a lot outside of that. You also had the the idea to play on a different side. And so uh, what helped you get through that time? Just trusting the process. And regardless of whether I was playing or not, I was still practicing. I was still getting better. I was still ha having opportunities to um, challenge myself and improve. But I guess just taking one step at a time was just key for me. And if there was moments where I had the opportunity to kind of show off what I could do, then I was going to take full advantage of those times. But it was really just, it was a time for me to grow and to learn and kind of sit back and be able to watch and observe and learn that way. Even if you're on the bench, you can still learn from mm -hmm. it. Uh, but how do you deal from, with failure? Let's say in, in the match, if you mess up or from game to game, if you have a bad game, I don't know if you have ever had a bad, bad game. Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> but if that happens, <laughs> if it ever does happen, uh, how do you bounce back from those situations? This is so random, but our coach... He said that's one time and it kind of stuck with me. He was just like, have the memory of a goldfish, mm -hmm. um, as crazy as that sounds. And goldfish can literally only remember stuff for like a couple seconds. Okay, okay. And so I try to have that mentality when I play. Mm -hmm. It took a long time for me to get to the point where I could just play without critiquing myself mm -hmm. in a match. Um, and obviously there's a time to go back and look at film and improve that way. But when you're in the moment, it's not easy just to fix major things whenever you're competing. So mm -hmm. I think just taking it one, one play at a time and mm -hmm. breathing, mm -hmm. Um, and I'll talk to myself as crazy as that sounds. No, it's a good thing, but what kind of stuff do you say to yourself? Usually sometimes it'll be encouragement or other times it'll be just technique things that I want to keep working on or like, Madison, your arms weren't early on that mm -hmm. ball. Like, make sure your arms are out, create an angle. Mm -hmm. um, I'll kind of talk through the things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. And that obviously brings it to the forefront of my mind, but also just kind of encourages me. Um, and I'll be like, Madison, you're fine. Like, one yeah, pass, yeah, you're, yeah. you're okay. Yeah. Or sometimes I'll reach out to a teammate and be like, hey, I'm really struggling. Like, mm -hmm. can you give me something to work with mm -hmm. or give me some feedback or encouragement? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. Uh, they call it like self-talk. And that's very important to build your confidence because a lot of athletes, they're not aware of how bad they really speak to themselves. And they say if they have a mistake, this is something negative and bad to themselves. So that's good that you do that. Um, but after a game, let's say you said the memory of the goldfish. After a game, how do you move forward from there? Like if, if a, you have a bad game, uh, do you look at feeling a lot? Like how do you uh, respond to failure in that sense? Oh, goodness. I think for me it's just – recognizing that my performance, my stats, they're just numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, that has nothing to do with me as a person. I'm so much more than just Maddie Skinner, the volleyball player. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just a short time in my life where I'll look back and obviously it's great memories, but my worth is not defined in that. It's defined mm -hmm. in my faith. It's defined mm -hmm. in Christ. And um, that's just something that kind of keeps mm -hmm. me grounded and keeps mm -hmm. me um, able to bounce back whenever I have setbacks because right. there's so many yeah, in this it's, sport. Yeah, it's going to happen. Uh, but can you talk a little bit more about your faith and how that helps you get through the low periods and difficult periods? Yeah, I mean, I grew up in a Christian home. My mom is actually the head of women's ministry at my mm -hmm. church, so that's something that I've always been super involved in. Um, and going to college is really just me kind of taking it into my own hands and mm -hmm. 
kind of developing re my relationship with the Lord on my own and not mm -hmm. having someone in my home that's just like, hey, we're going to go to church and we're going to have our quiet time and we're going to mm -hmm. do all this stuff. But it has been the biggest constant in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many things that have changed throughout my decision of transferring. I was like, I have no idea what to do. Mm -hmm. Like there's a bajillion in one places that I could go right mm -hmm. now. I'm like, Lord, I need you to show me where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Where am I, where am I going to impact the most people? Where am I going to learn mm -hmm. the most? Where am I going to grow the most? Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, he's helped me through so much. Mm -hmm. He has been the biggest factor in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, I love having a relationship with him. And, and it's amazing that I have someone with me constantly mm -hmm. to kind of guide me. Do you have like a mantra or maybe a verse or something you tell yourself uh, when you have these difficult situations? Like you said, with recruiting, you could go to any school in the, in the whole nation. So how do you, you, know, you had to choose and uh, make a big decision. So how do you deal with big decisions? Like, do you have a mantra you tell yourself? Oh, goodness. I think for me, I mean, this relates to so many different aspects of my life, but I just remind myself, like, he already knows what's going to happen. Mm. Like, the, my future is already set for me. Like, he has laid out every single plan and path in my life. And so no matter what decision decision that I make, it's already been it's already been laid out in his plan. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a matter of me trusting what I feel like he's telling me mm -hmm. um, to do and really praying about my decisions before I make them. And I'm um, obviously seeking my my mom's guidance and mm -hmm. the people around me. Um, but just knowing that it's already it's already decided and he already knows what he has for me is just comforting because right. it's not up to me. And this might be a left turn, but we got to talk about social media. So, <laughs> so uh, you got 30K verified. How do you deal with the social media use? How do you? Um, use it as an athlete oh goodness i mean it's wild mm -hmm. i love being able to one follow my friends mm -hmm. connect with people it can be distracting sometimes yeah, with all the different platforms mm -hmm. and all the um different things that come with it but i enjoy just being able to i mean i'll have people dm me and be mm -hmm. like you're the reason i started playing volleyball mm -hmm. or you inspired me mm -hmm. in this way and i'm like that means so much to me mm -hmm. just knowing that there's people that look up to me and um i'm an encouragement and motivation for them to kind of do what they do is awesome mm -hmm. but I love social media. Yeah, you love it. great. What's the negative sides of it? Do you, like, how do you deal with, is there a lot, a lot of distractions? Like, how do you deal with all this uh, stuff coming at you? I don't really go on, like, I, mean, I don't know what it's called. It might be Volley Talk or something. But I don't go on, like, the social media pages that talk about mm -hmm. Texas or, mm -hmm. like, evaluate players. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many different platforms now that just, they, they'll talk about volleyball, mm -hmm. um, which is cool. But sometimes it can be a very negative place. Mm -hmm. um, so I tend to not really look at stats too much after matches mm -hmm. or kind of look at comments of posts after matches just because it's someone else's opinion. Right. And I have no control over that. Right. And in my mind, I kind of know how I performed and I know right. what I need to do to, to be better. Mm -hmm. Or if I did great, I'm like, that was a great match for me. Right. Um, but yeah, I tend to kind of block out right. the negative aspects of that's it. That's good. You have a lot of followers. So I have to ask, who's like the biggest celebrity that's DM'd you asking whatever, <laughs> if you don't know? Oh, goodness. Um, I'm really good friends with Mobamba. Okay. Um, or is that you meet here? Like No, he actually reached out to me after he won the national championship my mm -hmm. freshman year. Because nice. I think I put horns down or something. Okay. Oh, yeah, and he was like, like yeah. made some comment or slid up. And yeah. um, we kind of became friends throughout yeah. that. So we hung out a couple of yeah. times. Nice. And yeah yeah who would have thought you'd come here now yeah so, it's crazy he'll come in and he'll visit and i'm like uh -huh. oh my gosh it's good to see you but yeah he's one of my really good friends so okay. i'd say what do you think was your toughest or lowest moment i you'd say would you say the covid year was that tough or would you say let's say this year this year what was the toughest part of this year oh goodness um i think for me personally it was just switching back to the outside mm -hmm. um consistently mm -hmm. and also working on my service even being a six rotation player Jarrett promised to train me as a six rotation player mm -hmm. and that's all i really cared about i mm -hmm. wasn't asking for playing time or anything mm -hmm. guaranteed like that. But I was just like, as long as you will train me mm -hmm. um, as this, and I'm kind of in this position from mm -hmm. now on, I'm set. So I think just adjusting to that and having a little bit of a bigger role on the court mm -hmm. um, has been tough, but also it's been so rewarding and I've learned so much. So mm -hmm. I think that's just been the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and it's obviously not negative, yeah. but it's just been the hardest thing for me to kind of get used to. Um, and then did you want to hi? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> um, I got to shout out my girls. I mean, okay. they're absolutely incredible. Uh -huh. I enjoy spending time with them off the mm -hmm. court, obviously. And then I live with some of them. So I, we're around one another 24-7. Mm -hmm. And um, they're just so much fun to be around. Well, you have great teammates being on great teams. You have uh, Logan Eggleston, I think, and Zoe Fleck, who've also played professionally. What are some things you learned from them? I think the biggest takeaway has been their leadership. Um, I've never kind of had to step into much of a leadership role. There's always been people that have been older than me or kind of um, more outspoken than me mm -hmm. to kind of take that role. But um, just being a part of every single huddle and kind of hearing the things that Logan says and the way she's constantly communicating with us and encouraging us and has been so consistent with mm -hmm. that has just inspired me. And same with Zoe. Zoe was a little less outspoken, but we would have so many meaningful one-on-one -on -one conversations mm -hmm. 
off the court and on the court of just talking through things, her encouraging me um, and me encouraging her as well. So I think the leadership aspect has probably been the biggest takeaway. What did you learn about from Zoe about leading? Like she seems like she's kind of like you, more quiet and less outspoken. But I'm, I assume next year you're probably going to have to be one of the leaders on the team since you've you've won so many times. <laughs> so uh, so how are you going to lead in that way uh, and and still be without having to be a loud player? How can you still lead in, in, your, in your way? I've always led by action. I feel mm -hmm. like that's been my thing. The next level for me that I've learned over the past few years has just been leading by voice. Mm -hmm. um, and I love how Zoe connected with people on mm -hmm. such an individual level. Um, and I feel like that allowed us to trust her more. And whenever she held us accountable or mm -hmm. got on to us for right. something, we knew it was out of a place of love. Mm -hmm. um, and we had that connection with her and that relationship with her to mm -hmm. where we respected one another so much. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for me, just kind of stepping into it, that's been a priority for me. It's just getting to know the girls and getting to know them as an individual level so we can mm -hmm. build that trust and build that relationship. It's important to have a lot of, spend a lot of time with your team outside of uh, the game, I mean, you don't want to get too tired of him because you're always around them, but you still, it's important to also spend time with him. Yeah, we do. I mean, even whenever we're not required to be together, we're together. Mm -hmm. And obviously we have our times where we get tired of each other, but mm -hmm. that's normal. And right. then you just take some time to yourself and yeah. then you're ready to hang mm -hmm. out with him the next day. Yeah, exactly. um, but yeah, I mean, most of us live with one another. Mm -hmm. And um, right now we haven't had too much downtime to kind mm -hmm. of do stuff that we normally do. But in the summer, we're out paddle boarding. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll go get food together all the yeah. time. So it's just, I mean, we're constantly with one another, yeah, but it's nice. awesome. What's a mental weakness that you had to overcome? And yeah, maybe one you're still dealing with or what's one that you've had to overcome? I think for me, I just am super competitive and um, was very much a perfectionist growing up and through high school and in college. And it's funny because my mom would tell me when I was little, I was, I would be writing letters, mm -hmm. just learning letters, and I would erase holes in the paper because I wanted to get it perfect. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm just super meticulous and I like to do things well. And so um, one, it's not realistic. It's no one's perfect. It's impossible to reach that level of perfection. And mm -hmm. so I think that's been the biggest weakness for me is mm -hmm. just I get super in my head sometimes mm -hmm. um, and critical of myself and just frustrated overall. Mm -hmm. But I think one thing that has helped me with that is just turning outwards. Mm -hmm. um, and if I'm struggling, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna talk to this teammate or hey, I'm gonna encourage them. I'm gonna start communicating more mm -hmm. um, and really just taking the focus off of myself. Mm -hmm. Cause whenever you kind of get individualized, things just start to go south mm -hmm. for you and as the team. And mm -hmm. so it's just kind of selfish. So um, that's been the biggest thing for me. It's just I've learned over the years, it's just turning outward mm -hmm. um, when things aren't going my way. Yeah, right, some great advice. All right, so that was some great insight so far. Now we'll get into the final five. These are the final five questions I asked every athlete. So the first one is, what's the misconception about being a D1 athlete? Oh, goodness. I don't think a lot of people realize how many, like, extracurriculars <laughs> that we have to do. Um, sometimes, I mean, I for me, I thought it was just I come in and I do school and I do volleyball. But there's um, we'll have certain meetings that we have to go mm -hmm. to and we'll obviously do time serving and now it's NIL. Right. And so mm -hmm. there's so many other things that play into it that I don't think people take into account. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously our schedules are busy, but whenever you add on the things that are not required of you mm -hmm. that you might want to do just because you want to feel normal in a sense, exactly. obviously it gets a little bit more, but mm -hmm. I would just say all the different things that we just didn't really build into our schedule whenever we first signed up. For this. Yeah. You didn't even think about all the exercise. No, 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 no. And the second one is what's your worst conditioning workout of your career? <laughs> so yeah, it could be which one had worse, whether it Kentucky or here at UT. Oh goodness. Um, I can't really think of one here. I mean, they're all tough. I don't, I can't think of one where I've gotten to the point of just complete exhaustion mm -hmm. where I'm like, I just can't move on. Mm -hmm. But at Kentucky, we would run like on the football field in summer <laughs> workouts. <laughs> we were a track team sometimes. Um, oh, actually, I lied. I have a good one. Mm -hmm. um, I would say probably doing stadiums at okay. Kentucky. Uh -huh. um, we got in trouble mm -hmm. and we had to do stadiums and that was brutal. How many, you know, like, so it's up, up and down the yeah we Yeah, we played in Memorial Coliseum. So it's just like they had rows. You'd go up and down, mm -hmm. touch the exit signs. Mm -hmm. um, and there was work in between of just like pushing towels across yeah. the ground and right. doing all this stuff. And it was at like five in the morning. So it was okay. just brutal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So we'll talk about the pleasant stuff now. So what's your best memory in, in your career? I mean, you had some big situations, but it didn't have to be a trophy. It could be whatever you want it to be. What was the best memory? I would say the best memory is... One, winning the national championship, mm -hmm. but two, doing it with my sister. Mm -hmm. I mean, we mm -hmm. played growing up together in high school. She was two years older than me, so we had my freshman and sophomore year to play together. But 
just winning alongside her. I don't mm -hmm. know of a lot of people that have won national mm -hmm. championships with their sister. Oh, yeah. um, so that was super special. And mm -hmm. just to be able to go through the whole process with one another, I'm um, going to experience that. And that's something that we'll remember for the rest of our mm -hmm. lives. And we'll have pictures together that we can put in our houses yeah. of us together <laughs> with the trophy. So yeah. just being able to do that with someone so close to me, I mean, she's my best friend. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And you broke a lot of records. You on, uh, like that record with your sister. And then if you can get three or four or five, <laughs> we'll see. You might be breaking a lot of records. All right. The next one is, What's some advice you could give to high school athletes that want to be a college athlete? Oh, goodness. I think building connections mm -hmm. is super helpful as well. Um, my club directors, they were the ones that really helped me reach out to coaches. They had a lot of connections and they were communicating with them or like, hey, we have Maddie Skinner. Or, um, they helped me send emails and they helped me do all these different things. And so I feel like that's the easiest way to kind of get your name out there. Um, and then also just making film and, and highlight videos and all those different things. But um, I would say invest in the people. All right. Last question is, how do you define the word winner? I think it's just giving it all that you had mm -hmm. and knowing that you didn't hold anything back, knowing mm -hmm. that you were a great teammate um, first off and that you were someone that was obviously fun and enjoyable to be around. But I think it just goes back to, did I give it all that I had? Did I hold anything back? Um, and if you can answer yes to that thing, then it's, I mean, I feel like you're a winner.